Hi, I'm Ian Anderson, an Apple certified trainer. Cormelt's pigment plugin set offers high precision tools to correct color. Today we're going to focus on two filters that use curves, a great way to grade in an 8-bit or 10-bit workflow. In case you're not familiar with how these color correction tools work, let's look at how curves works in Photoshop. Curves looks intimidating at first glance, but conceptually it's not too hard. At first we're going to look at the composite curve, corresponding to luminance. Every pixel in the image has an effective brightness value. A pixel with, for example, 25% brightness would enter the graph here. Point straight up until you hit the control in the centre, currently a diagonal line. Now turn by 90 degrees and exit the graph to the left. The value at which you exit is the new brightness for this pixel. Adjusting the shape of the control curve gives you a great deal of power. Dragging the curve slightly up with a single control point will make the image brighter. That 25% previous brightness is now about 33%, while the shadows are still dark and the highlights have not been blown out. The effect is concentrated around the midtones in the image. The opposite curve would mostly darken the midtones, only affecting the highlights and shadows a little. There's a lot more to curves that we don't have time to go into, but its colour correction power stems from the fact that you can adjust each of the individual channels separately, as well as adjusting the luminance curve. Let's take a look at the options you have with RGB levels and curves in Final Cut Pro. You can adjust the minimum and maximum value, plus the gamma curve between the two points. It's similar to the control you have with the levels adjustment, except that you can see the curve produced. Normally, the curve only stays on screen while you adjust the settings, but you can change your preference to see them all the time if you prefer. In this image, for example, we might want to boost the red midtones while restricting the highest blue values, and that's easy. Uniquely, you can see the curve you've produced. You can also save this as a preset if this is a look you might want to employ elsewhere. It's a different style of adjustment to the existing Final Cut color correction tools, and it works in high precision 10 bit workflows. To see before and after, use Frame Viewer with Current Frame and Current Frame without Filters as the two displayed options. Flip the options about or drag interactively. The default controls are custom core melt sliders, though you can use Final Cut style sliders if you want to animate the properties. One new and handy feature is that you can drag the sliders above 1 and below 0 if you hold down the command key as you drag. This will be very useful if you're working with HDR images. For best results, choose the color correction window preset so you can see the video scopes. This way you can see which channels need adjustment and correct them individually. Keep an eye on the waveforms to make sure the image isn't clipping against black or white. Here, this iceberg has become bluer and much clearer with a few tweaks. Another key feature of curves is to add contrast by making the highlights brighter and the shadows darker. This last S curve is one of the most common adjustments made in retouching a still image, and you can access it by using the Luma S curve filter. The options here let you control how large an S-curve you want to introduce and where it bends. That is, what is the midpoint of the contrast curve? It's a slightly different approach, but quite effective. Earlier, I mentioned that high precision color was possible with these plugins. In Final Cut, choose Sequence Settings, Video Processing, and choose one of the high precision YUV options. In Motion, under Project Properties, set Bit Depth to 16-bit. Another filter that could be useful is HSL Levels and Curves. A typical application would be to boost moderately saturated areas without affecting low or high saturation areas, or perhaps to shift the colour in an interesting way by adjusting hue. The result can be used on its own or tweaked with another filter. Two filters are useful for adjusting just some of the colours in an image. Secondary Grader and Secondary HSL Grader 
perform adjustments on a key colour range. To select the sky in this image, it's easiest to select the water, view the key to make sure it's right, and then invert the selection. Now that I've got a selection, I can use RGB sliders to control colour, or hue saturation and luma sliders with a secondary HSL grader. Here's another before-after comparison. If you're looking for something relatively specific, there are some filters which could help. Bleach Bypass, Filmic Look and Day for Night offer a quick way to get what you're looking for, with controls for fine-tuning. Advanced Vignette can add a simple vignette, but if you tweak the settings, it can also help you shine a spotlight, like this. Other filters, including Purple Fringe Reduction and Sky Replace, could help you to avoid a reshoot. And if you want more information on Sky Replace, look for our tutorial here on Creative Cow. There are many more filters in Pigment, and they all support high precision output. For more tips on their use, ask us on our forum. Thank you.